Hi, let's discuss today about industrial compressors, the brief process of working of these compressors and the associated aspects of instrumentation and controls. If you understand what is a compressor, it's a mechanical device that increases the pressure of a gas by reducing its volume. Typically, it can be similar to a pump, which also increases the pressure on a fluid and transport it through the pipe. But here it is for the purpose of transporting the fluid, but here it is for the purpose of purely for reducing its volume by increasing the pressure, because the pressurization has a lot of process benefits in process industries. And the key difference between a fluid and a gas is, gas is compressible and a liquid, a fluid can be either a liquid or a gas. And if we use normally use fluid, if we cannot distinguish between, or if we are making common, either for gas or for the liquid, then we use the word fluid. As we know, uh, when gas, when it is compressed, gas volume decreases and temperatures, temperature increases. As we have seen, a compressor is a device that pressurizes a working fluid, it can again be a liquid or a gas, on the basic aim of compressor is to compress the fluid and deliver it to a pressure, which is higher than its original pressure. The purpose of the compressor is to provide air for combustion in boilers or in furnaces, to transport process fluid through a pipeline, to provide compressed air for diving pneumatic tools, for driving pneumatic tools. That's basically pneumatic tools. We will see it uh, during the course. Pneumatic uh, tools are all driven by the compressed air and to circulate the process fluid through certain processes, we also use the compressed fluids. If you see a typical reciprocating compressor, you know, we have a piston here and we have a cylinder arrangement. And this side, we have the uh, discharge valve on the top and uh, th this side, we have the suction valves, right? You just, this is a cross section of a circular uh, um, cylinder normally, and this is a piston. When we take it in a Y cross section, we are seeing the uh, piston, we are able to see the piston. So the circumstantial circumference, we have the suction valve, on top we have the discharge valve. Okay, as you see, the, as the piston comes down, it sucks the air or the fluid inside, and as the piston goes up, it compresses and then sends out the discharge through the discharge opening. This is a typical functioning of a reciprocating compressor. So as the piston continuously with the speed of the engine uh, moving up and down, it is uh, sucking the air, compressing it and discharging it to the, through the discharge opening. So if you just try to understand the intake stroke and the discharge stroke, uh, during the intake stroke, you will see the section is coming uh, through this, this is the piston and then uh, getting compressed. Okay, suction valve is open during the intake stroke. Because the piston is going in, it is just sucking the air or sucking the fluid through the suction valve, which gets opened during the suction process or the intake process. So in the discharge stroke, when the compression is taking place, the piston is going up. So suction valve is closed and discharge valve is open so that the fluid the compressed fluid is getting discharged to the discharge valve and through the opening to the pipe or casing or to the header. This is exactly what is happening. So in case of a refrigerant, if the compressor is used as a refrigeration compressor, a refrigeration moving into compressor from evaporator, you know, here the in a typical refrigeration system, compressor, because it's a closed loop system, compressor when the piston is going out, it is sucking the refrigerant into the cylinder and in the next uh, piston is when it is moving up, it is compressing the refrigerant uh, inside that, thereby increasing the pressure and then sending it through the discharge port. This is a discharge port and this is a suction port. During the suction, when the piston is going up, this is a compression when the piston is going up. So this is closed and discharge valve is open. In the suction process, discharge is closed and suction valve is open. This is exactly what happens in a refrigeration compressors. Yeah, this is a general uh, explanation of uh, you know HP and LP. There are two stages of high pressure and low pressures. So we have a after cooler and we have a temperature uh, probe. And what's happening here is this is this is where the air filter is there, 
and the air during the sucking process the inlet valve is open and the low pressure piston is uh, going down okay and then it gets compressed here and then it releases so here it is the um, discharge valve then in the second stage it goes up here right and uh, intercooler gets cooled because the temperature also builds up comes back in the second stage and here it is the inlet and you know the high pressure piston here further increases its pressure to next stage then it moves to the after cooler again it is cooled uh, then it is sent to the uh, the uh, header line so this is exactly so first stage of uh, compression takes place here then it goes gets cooled here again it's heated up you can see the red symbol the red part wherever is there in this cylinder it is very hot air and then again when it goes here it gets cooled in the, in the intercooler because we have again a water circulating inside again comes back for the second stage high pressure compression stage gets compressed again goes through the after cooler here and then goes to the so once in a while you have a relief valve here and relief valve here so this is exactly uh, what happens in a two stage compression cycle then we have two stage so far we have seen two stage single crank so we had only the single crank here and the two uh, both low pressure and h uh, high pressure pistons are connected and with single crank two stage compression was taking place but if you see here we have the two cranks here they are continuously uh, rotating and through air filter we are taking in the uh, low pressure cylinder then as the piston pushes up then how pressure goes into the next stage again gets cooled here comes back to the next stage high pressure uh, cylinder and piston again pushes this then it goes to the after cooler and then co uh, you have a cooling water to drain it then it goes to the air to bottle or to the reservoir and this is the exactly where we have the cooling water cycle because the temperature of the air increases as we have just seen as it is compressed as its volume reduces pressure increases temperature increases and we will just see the you know rotor uh, pistons where we have a, this is a typical rotary uh, compressor and when the rotor spins right forcing the piston to move up and down this piston is moving up and down when the piston moves down the valves open here and air enters or the fluid enters and when the piston goes up and then the this is a uh, discharge is opened and this is closed then the for air is forced through the output so when the piston moves up air is forced into the output chamber so the inlet chamber compression outlet chamber this is another type of uh, compression that takes place yeah so typical uh, you know two cylinder we have two cylinders here two stage uh, normally same single crank this is how a compressor looks like and when this is rotor uh, spins piston we have a two piston you know this is one inlet valve inlet port outlet port right so sucking process inlet air comes in gets compressed goes to the second stage and in this when the piston is going down it comes down and again when it pushes compressed air goes to the say pressure so all this the entire thing at the bottom is a reservoir so that is exactly uh, what happens in the air compressors what we have uh, seen so similarly if you see a centrifugal uh, compressor so high pressure you have to see it axially right from the sides i know the we have impellers high pressure air uh, high speed rotating fan pulls the air inside from this then when air hits the center fan centrifugal force expels it radially towards this and the air travels around the casing as air passes through a diffuser it slows and increases in pressure and pressurized air is forced through the outlet pipe into the reservoir this is what we normally call it as a reservoir or a, or a chamber where to store the compressed air at a given pressure and this is how what we normally call it as a ring main of compressed air network all around the plant right uh, you have the this going through all the plant and everywhere you have the workstation we have workstation 1 workstation 2 workstation 3 like this and let's see what exactly is there in workstation in a typical workstation you will have a shut off wall and air filter you will have a lubricator and pressure regulator because once in a while you can and a quick connect and disconnect uh, we have the thing so this is connected to a grinder uh, you will see here and instead of this here you can either connected to your grinder or connected to a drilling bit or connected to a screw driver 
or anything you can quickly connect. So like this, in the entire process plant, we have a number of the pipelines running all around with the different workstations connected through the ring main system. And uh, if you see this layout, we have a two-stage uh, compressor. After cooler, it is going to the uh, air reservoir tank. Uh, and from this, uh, we have a shutoff valve at different stages. Then it is connected to the uh, ring main and you have uh, automatic drain pipes because we may have some moisture inside the air. We need to dry it out. So then it is going to the thing. So from this workstation, you may use it for different all kinds of pneumatic tools. Um, instrument systems, control, actuators, and all these things, you will be tapping the air. And this will be, ring main will be spreading all through the length and breadth of the any and every process plant. So if you see the typical uh, control of the instrumentation, you will see here for the uh, compressor, number one, you are measuring the uh, temperature here, the temperature at the exit of this, then you have the evaporator, then you have a flow transmitter, flow indicating controller, and flow differential pressure. So this is the uh, flow wall, which is basically linking the inlet and outlet uh, by in the measurement of a flow indicating controller in order to measure the flow differential transmitter. It measures the differential pressure here, then again gives the um, takes in from the evaporator, from the compressor. It can be a typical uh, process compressor instead of air compressor. So this is another uh, thing for a, a compressor. You have a driving motor for a compressor. From suction drum, your air is coming in here. After going out, it is going out here. And then through the outer uh, of, uh, air cooler, it's going out. Okay. So we have the pressure controller uh, here basically. And then pressure gauge here. And uh, sensing the pressure control, we are controlling the speed of the drive motor. That's exactly what happened. And then at the outlet, we are also sensing the pressure. Uh, based on this pressure, we are opening or closing the, we're giving the control here, basically to see the um, uh, amount of air that is sucked into the suction drum. Anyway, this is another uh, typical application. Uh, the thing you will see, ASC is the anti-surge controller, ASV is anti-surge wall, TC is temperature controller, PC is pressure controller, flow controller and the level controller. So we have a, a pressure controller and pressure transmitter to give it to anti-surge controller. This anti-surge controller in turn controls the anti-surge wall, thereby regulating the flow inside the suction chambers. Okay, so in the suction chamber, we have the level control uh, through some flow measurement here. Okay, so then the driver motor is basically controlled after my control after sensing the pressure at the exhaust and then accordingly the speed of the uh, pressure of the uh, discharge then the speed of the motor is controlled so you have the for after coolers you have the fan uh, depending on sensing the temperature controller this fan motor uh, is controlled in order to regulate the temperature of the comp hot compressed air that's going out so that is exactly the typical control system to see the instrument uh, air system that we have. So from ambient air, you have filter A and filter B coming into the compressor. It is driven by electric motor. The discharge of this, you have pressure indicator, pressure controller, and temperature uh, controller because we have a cooler here. So you have a fan, uh, speed is controlled in order to uh, control the thing. Then you have a moisture separator because hot uh, air, um, you always have the uh, air that is coming in when you compress the uh, air, there is always a moisture in the air. So then from this, it is going back to recycle valve and it, uh, that's how you are regulating the inlet. This is the one uh, level of control. Then you have the uh, trap to remove the water because when it comes to the instrument air to the consumer or to the instruments or pneumatic equipment, we are expected to have a 0% moisture because this moisture is very highly detrimental to the instrument systems or to the pneumatic systems. That's why when we have an air receiver here, um, then we have the, uh, it is going through the oil trap again, dryer in vessel A, and then dryer in vessel B, two, two stages of uh, drying the air in order to basically remove the thing. Then you are having the pressure transmitter and then um, analyzing the pressure after filter. So discharge, then finally, so, so much of process is required 
before the air goes to the um, ring main system where the air is used either for pneumatic equipment or for pneumatic actuators or for pneumatic tools or pneumatic instruments, pneumatic transmitters, pneumatic converters, okay, uh, pneumatic controls, uh, pneumatic control walls, actuators of the control walls. So for all these things, we are basically using the pneumatic air. That's the compressed air. Okay, so this is another uh, example of, you know, basically by measuring the, uh, you know, pressure level, sensing low or pressure sensing high, depending on which, which you are. So this feedback is taken from the, exa the uh, discharge of this, then it is given to this. And from this, you are controlling the such. So in between, we have a flow transmitter and flow analyzer, pressure differential uh, transformers, because if the pressure uh, level is high or low, depending on that, you can shut down the pressure compressor. So this is a typical, and again, you have a temperature control at the cooler, after coolers. Okay, so this is a typical uh, control systems and process involved of the uh, compressors, and uh, hope you have enjoyed the uh, session. And um, let's see, let's meet in uh, some other topic. Okay, and uh, if you want to watch uh, more related videos, please subscribe to this channel and uh, share for regular updates.